given f of x and g of x, we want to find the composite function f of g and then determine the domain of the composite function f of g. We do need to be careful when determining the domain of a composite function. The domain of f of g of x must contain the restrictions on the domain of g of x, the inner function, and the restrictions of the domain on the newly formed composite function. So we cannot just consider the domain of the newly formed composite function to determine the domain of f of g of x. So to start off, let's rewrite f of g using this notation here, which means f of g, sometimes written as f of g of x like this, is equal to f of g of x. Using this notation here, we can see the inner function is g of x. So before we find this composite function, we need to determine the domain of g of x because it could affect the domain of our composite function. Well notice that g of x is equal to the square root of x. So notice if x is negative, we would have an imaginary number, which means the domain of g of x must be x is greater than or equal to zero, which we could express using interval notation as closed on zero to positive infinity. So regardless of what our composite function will be, this restriction must be in the domain of our composite function. Now let's go back over here and find our composite function and see if we have any more restrictions. And again, since g of x is equal to the square root of x, we can write this as f of the square root of x, and now the square root of x will be the input into function f. And since f of x is equal to x squared plus one, this would be the square root of x squared plus one. And when we square square root, they undo each other, so this is just x plus one. So our composite function f of g is equal to the linear function x plus one, which if this was not a composite function, the domain would be all real numbers, but this would be an error. Because the domain of our composite function must also contain the restrictions of the domain of the inner function g of x. So here's an example of where the domain of our composite function is the same as the domain of the inner function, in this case, x is greater than or equal to zero. Hopefully this makes sense because if we have a composite function where the initial inputs will be into function g, the restrictions on the domain of g must also be considered when determining the domain of our composite function. Okay, we'll take a look at another example in the next video.